Coming back in our now noontime hour as we start hour number three, or two hours and 58 minutes, if you want to be specific about it. Patrick Kelly out of the great state of Kansas. Multiple times I've seen this guy down in Topeka, down in Wichita, as as they've hosted the NAIA championships a number of years, doing some great stuff. Pat is the host of Airtime and the Kansas Wrestling Coaches Association podcast, as well as dabbled in a third one, or you're trying to figure that out, but... Yeah. Coach Kelly, welcome to the show. I'm I'm, I'm rocking your semen wrestling shirt here. All right. So you've had the anniversary. I've been trying to be on brand, but uh, welcome to International Podcast Day. Well, thank you, and thank you for doing this. It's been uh, been really entertaining during our, our hybrid day, so we don't have have students there. They're all at home today, um, so I've had it on in the background and and, and really uh, really interesting stuff. Yeah, it's it's various course. Of course, it's coming up after Coach Kelly, we got Jude Swisher from the Home Mat Advantage, Brian Reinhardt from Pack Mentality, then Matt Geeks, and then we get on. We'll, we'll finally get to our dinner break around 6, but uh, we just finished up with, yeah, okay, Aaron Sweezy already is telling us Topeka equals toe picker. I don't know, whatever, whatever that means. So, <laughs> uh, the, yeah, the, 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 the Sways can sit there in the peanut gallery. That's the last comment we're getting in. But, uh, Coach Kelly, you've been uh, involved in uh, not a variety of levels of wrestling throughout the uh, throughout your long career in the sport, and uh, just give us a background of of what got you into the sport of wrestling, and then eventually we'll get to the podcasting questions. Yeah, well, uh, come from a big family of eight brothers and sisters. Um, Dad originally got into to wrestling when he was in high school, probably about a sophomore in high school. Um, just really liked it, really liked the sport, and uh, went on to Iowa State and uh, and wrestled there a couple of years before. Uh, um, getting drafted and, and uh, part of the Korean conflict. And then when he came back, he tried it a little bit as he finished up at Iowa State. But uh, so just actually did it just first two years. And then and it really, I mean, my first memories were were surrounded by, by wrestling, um, you know, going to events and, 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 you know, and then eventually watching my brothers um, being very connected with the Iowa State program. Um, you know, dad had tickets to the Iowa State football games, uh, when the stadium was originally built, the, the current stadium. Um, so been around that. And then, you know, when the nationals were in Iowa city or, or Iowa state, you know, we, we would go and, uh, um, you know, it, so just been really infused in the sport from, uh, uh, from my earliest memories. Now, what are your earliest memories of podcasting before you started your own and you've been very, uh, prolific in, in starting shows and, and getting the state of Kansas really connected with it. But what do you, what do you, I guess like the first question, this is one I haven't asked anybody yet today. Cause I figured I'm trying not to repeat questions. Do you, what was the first podcast you remember listening to? That I remember listening to, Oh boy, I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, I mean, wrestling related or just any podcast, any podcast, I, I would say probably, probably some financial one, Motley fool, uh, Clark Howard, one of those kind of kind of shows, probably that, that kind of interest me. Um, and then I can't tell you like how I happened upon um, wrestling podcasts. I'm sure it was something you put out, um, and it just kind of fascinated me. Um, you know, you think about back in the day when I was growing up and listening to uh, the station out of uh, Clearing, Iowa, uh, would broadcast the Nationals each year, and I can still I can remember when uh, Daryl Burley and uh, Mike Land wrestled in Corvallis and it was just, or when I would play television would, would, would air their, the, the television part. It just, it was just amazing to me that, wow, you know, wrestling has a place, um, on the airwaves. And so when the podcasting started coming in, I go back to a story. I was coming back from pr uh, middle school practice and, um, you know, on my way back, I caught a station out of Minneapolis, um, Minnesota, not Kansas. Um, and Jay Robinson was being interviewed. And I just thought it was so cool to be able to, you know, on a Wednesday night on my way home from middle school wrestling practice, listen to some wrestling content. And to the point where I got home and I was in the garage and my wife, Lisa, was like, well, what are you doing out there? And I listened to the last 10 minutes of the interview with Jay Robinson. And it just it was just amazing to me that I could I could uh, have have access to that content. And, and you know, now fast forward to to where we are now with just almost. I'm not say too much content, but I have to be a little bit selective or I'm not going to get through all the, the stuff that I want. Yeah, we look at your show. I'm going to bring it up on screen here with airtime. Uh, promoting the Olympic styles of USA Wrestling Kansas. That's the, that's one of the shows. And then you've got the KCWA, the Can, uh, excuse K me, KWCA. K not the Kansas City, no, Kansas <laughs> Wrestling Coaches Association. Correct. That's your other main show. And uh, when we talk about those two shows, I mean, one, uh, why is there a, a – 
I guess, crossover or not a crossover. You're separating the two. And, and, and why start two different shows? I guess start with airtime. Well, it, you know, it, it, that is a really good question because my sort of one of my intents with um, uh, starting the 34 Russell um, Twitter account, I guess, and w- the, the idea was to kind of consolidate them. But it doesn't always work with, you know, there's two boards. There's KWCA board and USA Wrestling Kansas board that are, that are different and a little bit different seasons. My, the, the airtime is, is sort of meant to start at state uh, Freestyle Greco and lead up to Fargo and through Fargo. And then the KWCA um, really starts in the fall and goes through the, uh, the, our fall um, clinic and banquet. Um, it's been a little bit, you know, since, since COVID. And I think hopefully going forward, it'll be a little bit more gray, that, that area. And this summer, that's definitely been the case where I've, I've put, I've kind of thought, you know, where does this show fit? better kwca or airtime and just and put them up in that in that way so that's that's a good question um it probably would would make some sense to to consolidate them but it just you know for a few reasons isn't real practical what's one thing that you've learned about the medium from when you jumped in be like okay i'm going to start a podcast to to now you know almost a you know over 100 episodes total uh between the two shows and be like okay what 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 have you learned and what's been the most daunting Uh, thing about putting it all together well i i think um I go back to I, technology has always been something I've been interested in, whether it's, you know, print um, or, you know, putting on a newsletter um, when I wrestled for Coach Denny in college uh, after I graduated um, to, you know, to this kind of stuff, to video, to, to making highlight videos, that sort of thing. It's always kind of really just amazed me what um, you can do on a shoestring budget and just the, the productions that you can really put out. Um, so that, that, uh, um, you know, that's a piece to it. Um, but I think in, I can't remember, I think it was one of maybe your original uh, emails that you put out that you're going to ask, you know, why I think, you know, why you got into podcasting. And, and so since I've, I've gone, the thing that, that probably impresses me most is how much podcasting is like competitive wrestling. Like when I was competing in wrestling, the preparation it takes, um, if you don't prepare the product you're going to put out, the, it's you. I mean, uh, you know, I'm in charge of everything from, um, you know, doing the research for the guest to, um, you know, the final posting of, of the podcast itself. So I, I think that there's just really, really good parallels between the two. Um, and, and it's a sort of you using those skills that I learned as a wrestler in, in the podcasting. One thing you've done about airtime is that we look through the guests. I'll bring that back up on screen again is, You've got you know you've got the referee from the the most recent uh, Flow Super Match with with Dake and Chimizo. Tanner Gardner, Kansas native. Tyler Gonzalez, who's uh, spent some time. His most a lot of people in Kansas know his dad Bob, but Tyler's been uh, yeah. around the world. You got Jace Kelzer wrestling at Northern Colorado. Yours truly, Clay Law at the University of North Carolina. Of course, then you get guys like Dan Gable. Okay, you as a wrestling junkie with the Iowa ties. When you get a guy an opportunity like Gable to come on the show, I mean, how do you how do you set that up, and how can people like you? that want to talk to Dan Gable on their podcast, set up an interview with Dan Gable? Well, there again, I think it, it kind of goes back to, to the wrestling and, and you have a goal in mind and, and you, you pursue it. Um, so I think that was kind of the case with that is I just started going through his website and where there's the, the form that you um, can submit, which you never know where that's really going to. And, and so I just kind of kept on that and then you know did a follow-up and actually – to show that I was serious, I had questions laid out um, that I sent to him. And I can remember we were uh, in the middle of the Sunflower State games, we were running that tournament, and, uh, and he called. And, and so I really excitedly took the call and, and, and got it set up. And, um, and ironically, I, I told him, I said, you know, I, I, was, I was just going to give up on you. And I was getting, I was, this is serious, I was getting ready to call Joe C., who is a Kansas native, right? And, and I was, I was going to interview him instead of you. And ironically, that's right time when, when, when C passed away, I'd found out that he was in a, a care facility and, um, you know, so that was kind of some irony there. Um, but, but I think it's just staying after it and, um, and, and, and preparing, um, you know, knowing that it's not, uh, just that, um, you know, a, a fan crazy thing, but it's something that I, I really, I want to ask these questions. I want the Kansas wrestling community to be, you know, more connected with the with the wrestling world, and you know, who better than Dan Gable to to kind of put that stamp on it? So, 
you had mentioned Mike Denny and, and and the the legacy of the as he says that place that other place other place um, you know University of Nebraska Omaha and and now they're a Division One school that lacks football and wrestling and and the legacy of you know you got the Dominguez brothers that came through there you know Mark Manning wrestled there you got so many great high school coaches across you know through Nebraska South Dakota North Dakota Kansas and in Colorado that wrestled at Omaha for a guy like Mike Denny what type of I guess mindset did Mike Denny instill in you that actually may help you with podcast, not as a wrestling coach, but maybe as a podcast host. Um, I think, uh, and and I I, I, I got to mention also my son Bailey wrestles for Coach Denny now, so that's been a real treat to get reconnected with him. And essentially, <laughs> the old program just moved to uh, to St. Louis, really. Um, but uh, I, I think that the the thing that coach Denny brought was more than just put the blinders on wrestling, but how does wrestling connect and how does it um, influence um, your life out, outside of wrestling? And, um, and so hopefully that's what I'm, I'm trying to get a little bit is more, more depth in when I, when I do these interviews and, and, and maybe inspire a kid that, uh, you know, uh, Tanner Gardner, I think is a great example of, of somebody that uh, outstanding wrestler but the backstory that, you know, he started late into the sport, um, but he was just a, a great kid and, and, and a great student. And, you know, it's taken him to, to high places. And, uh, you know, that, the wrestling was in the mix of that, not just the single thing um, that he had going. And I think that's uh, how I would uh, how I describe Coach Danny. We look at the news that's that's coming out of Kansas. It's not just you know you've got a busy summer when you bring in the the Fargo coaches and things of that nature and college coaches, but now we've got new programs popping up all over the place. A lot of them, okay, in Kansas's case, all of them subdivision one, meaning division two programs. We've had teams go from the NAI into division two, like Newman, for example, uh, which is in Wichita. You know, you've got the proud tradition at at Fort Hayes, and then the junior colleges. I mean, we've we've got them adding left and right. It seems and. Uh, you know, one of the one of the stalwarts of of NAI athletics, Baker University, which has served you know kind of as as one of the hosts when it comes to Topeka each year. You've had a lot. You went from having virtually no college wrestling news mm-hmm. to having an overabundance of programs, and there's still more coming. So, what's that been like as a podcast host, and what's that been like as a high school coach? To now, your kids have so many more options to go to school and stay at home and do it. Yeah, great question, and and just for. Uh... You know, for the numbers, we have 16 programs, 16 college programs in Kansas, um, two Division two, no Division three, no Division one, um, eight uh, JUCO, and six NAIA programs. So, I, I think, um, I, I mean, I'm, I tread a little bit lightly answering the question, but but truly, maybe we are at a, a bit of a saturation point for the ability to recruit kids that will wrestle for four years of eligibility um, at a Kansas school which means that you look at the rosters and there's, there's many out of, a lot of out-of-state flavor on, on really everybody's roster, um, you, know, you know, when they say even the, even the JUCOs. Um, so it, it, it's lots of opportunities, but the, the thing that I think people don't realize is, you know, it, it's still wrestling. It's still difficult. It's still, you know, the daily part of it. And, and <laughs> not all these programs are fully funded. And that's what probably the biggest thing people don't understand is that, um, you know, oh, you know, so-and-so got a letter today from, you know, one of, one of the schools. Um, it looks like they're recruiting him. That's going to pay for his college. And that, that's, that's uh, uh, hard to have parents understand that, especially for kids that maybe aren't year-round wrestlers and, uh, and then expect to, to jump into a college room and, and uh, to be successful. So, so that, that is a, a bit of an issue. But I, I think it's, it's, it's great the amount of opportunities we have, but it also comes with, um, you know, some think-throughs as, as well. And then um, I'm also with the, with the addition of programs, and this is not just Kansas, but anywhere, my, my hope is that always it's not just a, a thing that it's totally an enrollment-driven um, situation where it's a bottom-line dollars, but they have the facilities, they have the coaching staff, they have things in place that it's going to be, um, not just about bringing students to campus, not just about bringing dollars to campus, but also providing a, a, a really good opportunity where kids compete at the regional and national level. 
Now, with these programs that are, are coming through, and I, I'm not sure, well, I guess the question is, is what's the mindset of the high school athlete in Kansas uh, when, when you see other sports compared to wrestling? And despite there not being a Division One opportunity yet in the state, how do you as a coach and, and you as a wrestling community with the Wrestling Coaches Association kind of show, hey, you can get your college paid for. You can get an education. You can get a degree that you need to move on with your life, and you don't have to go to Manhattan or to 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 do that. So, how do you convince them that places you know like you know Maryville uh, across the river in in in, in the Missouri or, or the schools that are in Kansas like Fort Hayes or Newman are viable options that you really need to consider if you want to compete outside of high school after high school? Yeah, that's that's a another really good question, and because it, it is even though in the internet age where we're exposed to to everything you want to be exposed to. Um, there still is a little disconnect with not having a high profile D one program in the state. Um, so I, I look at it as we we sort of have a, a strata of of kids that are in the know in that um, you know are getting looks uh, at D one D two um, institutions, and then kind of the rest of them that are you know clueless about it or are just doing it. Um, as, as part of, um, you know, their education experience in, in high school. Um, so I, I think that exposure in that, um, you know, because I think some people that don't take, take Baker, for example, um, you know, a fairly new program like a lot of NIA programs are, but just what they've done in their outreach and um, offering, you know, off-season workouts and that kind of thing, um, really impacts the quality of love, uh, quality of wrestling in that area and in the state itself. So I think that you know some some more high profile states maybe kind of take that for granted a little bit um, that they have that exposure and they have those, those opportunities that that um, we're struggling a little bit to to get. And what about women's wrestling? That's obviously we saw Idaho just come on board as a, another state that's going to be having a girls wrestling state tournament and sanction that. Uh, what's the landscape like for, for girls and young women wrestling in the state of Kansas? Yeah. So I think we're up to either 28 or 29 states now nationally. And uh, Kansas uh, went, uh, uh, you know, as a full separate sport last year. So this will be year two. And after this year, it's more of a self-sustaining separate sport. Um, whereas now, um, you know, for two years, we could be co-ed practicing and, and, and co-ed competition even. Um, but at, they want to kind of uh, make it more separate, uh, more of a standalone, I should say, uh, sport starting uh, next season. So it, very good response. Uh, we've always had good participation with our, with our girls wrestling here in Kansas, and, um, and it showed. Um, we, you know, the, uh, the, the state tournament, for example, was designed to be a, a one-day event and a, a 12 person bracket, um, two regionals, uh, and uh, top six qualified from each regional. Well, it, it's grown so much that there's now four regionals, a two day state tournament, 16 person bracket. So it just shows you where, where things are. And, uh, and our numbers were already good before, uh, before Keisha stamped it as a, as a standalone sport. So um, it didn't surprise, I think, anybody um, that, that it would be attractive to, you know, to the masses. And we're looking at the KWCA Coach Association podcast here. And one thing that podcasters tend to do is they evolve. As we see your recent episodes here, uh, we talk about girls wrestling, you got the coaches, girls coach of the year, uh, Trisha Saunders award winner and things of that nature. But when it, when it comes to podcast, podcasting evolution, wrestling has evolved. Uh, the movements, the the funk, you know, the the wrestling moves that we watched in the fifties. Well, I didn't. I wasn't even close to being born yet. Um, and to to now are vastly different. So there's an evolution in technique and style. With podcasting, a lot of people start small. They might start with the, these earbuds that we've got because it's got the little microphone on it into your phone, or you you've picked up the the, the dreaded Blue Yeti or the ATR twenty one hundred. You sound like a guy that did your research before when you decided on it. What you, what you're using? So let's talk th- about the, the the tech side for a little bit from a wrestling coach doing technology doing podcasting because a lot of these things these wrestling coaching and technology they don't always vibe. Yeah. Um- and, th- and that's something where I've, uh, I, I really tune in, for example, when you talk about uh, equipment and, uh, you know, uh, gas, right? Uh, uh, and, uh, 
you know, getting the latest. And the I got gas. And that what, what Pat means is gear acquisition syndrome. Okay. So what you do not see is what is off screen. Uh, I got a couple tripods underneath that bar. I've got a couple focus, right? Two I twos. I must have eight or nine microphones in a, in a go bag for podcasting. There's my, my PA bag is over here. I've got this bag for Fargo. Uh, so yeah, gear acquisition syndrome. It's like, how many mixers do I need to buy? How many microphones do I need to buy? And when you've got that, that, infectious wrestling mentality acquiring gear and if you're into something you, you don't my wife calls it jason Bryanting it you're gonna jason <laughs> yeah. bryant this you're just gonna go i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do this wrestling coaches do the same thing so uh what was your pro progression from your, your i guess the, the first episode to where you produce a show now well basically i started off with just what i had on hand and uh and really haven't uh, you know i have kind of a, a what i would want and what I really can do, you know, because it's not something that I'm making money off of. Um, for example, the KWCA purchased this uh, blue snowball, um, which is just a little bit better quality than what I had. Um, but but really, uh, it, it's 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 very very low scale as far as what I what I'm doing um, for equipment. So how does that, how has that changed? Now you've got your eyes on stuff now because, uh, uh -huh. what do you want, do you want to, I mean, right now you're in a wrestling room, but, uh, do you, I mean, I built myself a studio. I think everybody wants to do themselves a studio. I mean, how yeah. close are you to, to really saying, all right, airtime, well, all yeah, right, I mean, KWCA, <laughs> this is going to be my wrestling studio. Yeah. Well, and I actually technically have that. We, we've got, we finished our basement, um, several years ago and have an office down there that really is a, a really nice setup, um, for it, uh, if I was at home, I'd, 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 that's where I would be. Um, you know, there's some acoustic issues in there, but but overall, it really is. Um, I, I could I could it could be very adequate if I was going to take this to the next level. Um, are already ready to go. Hey, you know, I mean, you could also put a speak. You can have a secret door, a speakeasy to it too. Yeah. But <laughs> I, I just I, I you you pop in here, you've got the wrestling. I was like, this guy, yeah, coming prepared to have a wrestling theme show. So that's uh, right. Yeah. That's one thing. Now, what are some things you want to do with podcasting that uh, I mean, maybe that you haven't quite gotten to yet, or you yeah. haven't seen the state quite uh, embrace just yet, but you're just waiting for them to do it. Yeah, I, I think, uh, and, and there again, I think Jason, your your influence. Um, you know, not to blow smoke or anything here, but it is is really um, important, and and I think that you you plant seeds in uh, people's minds, and and when you talk about you have a database of of guests you want to have, and 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 show ideas that you want to do, um, I've started to do that. So I don't want to say too much about it because people steal my ideas, but um, you know there there are some some things, and it's it's amazing. Um, so some people may be in a in a more of a power state would maybe look at Kansas and, you know, you know, how could you come up with wrestling stories? Quite the opposite. There are so many ideas and so many people that I, that I want to get to, um, that it's, you wouldn't, you, you to be a full-time job and then some. Um, so, so there are, I, I do have, you know, some ideas that I, that I want to do, you know, in addition to, to keep, keep on the track of, uh, of promoting, um, you know, our, our in-state uh, people. For sure. All right, back to the tech, because I'm a geek with this stuff, because I use Overcast. I started with Apple Podcast, then I use Overcast because I've got an iPhone, and it, it just works the tech for me, because I, I, I listen to, as of right now, I have 107 unlistened to podcasts, <laughs> and uh, I have a whole playlist that I can build that is just non Matt talk podcast. Cause I download all my shows to make sure that they're working, but I also have a folder of as many shows that I can get just to keep track. If I don't miss something. And there is, there is no way a human being can probably listen to every wrestling podcast and have an interest in other stuff. Like, you know, I listen to, you know, hardcore history when it comes out an eight hour episode, of course that takes you know a while to get through. I've got my craft beer podcast, which actually behind me, I have a growler from, uh, from uh, Flying Tiger, I believe is the uh, Blind the, Tiger. Bl yes. what, Blind Tiger. Okay, yeah. uh, I want Flying Tiger. I don't know why. I'm just <laughs> uh, Flying Tiger. I don't know. Um, I've got a growler that you gave me at the uh, the NAIs a couple years ago. That is adorned in my my craft beer loft behind me. So I want to listen to craft beer. I want to listen to the local uh, food and dining shows. I want to listen to, uh, you know, the the you know Yahoo Sports College podcast. There's so much wrestling content to consume. What make what? What's the sales pitch for? people to listen 
to your two podcasts and say, put these in your regular rotation. If you're a podcast junkie listener, uh, with apologies to Harry Duran and infringing on his name, but, uh, what, what, what makes, what makes people want to listen to your shows? What, well, what do you tell them? I, I think we're, I really want to be very much Kansas based. And so you'll get the, that flavor and, uh, but also infuse, um, regional and national and, and, you know, maybe even, uh, beyond that. Uh, so can it kind of be, I, I'd like to, to be more of a, a one-stop shop. I know that, um, I can't quite get there, especially with, with my coaching and teaching duties. Um, you know, sometimes it's a little bit sporadic, but I think that, um, my, my sales pitch would be to keep an eye on what's coming out and, you know, selectively listen when, uh, when you can't, um, you know, the feedback's been really good, but, uh, the audience size, I think, um, you know, I, I could use some, uh, use some more listeners for sure. Um, but, uh, but I think it's, it's really important to, for me, I think to, to, you know, put out quality and not necessarily quantity. Um, I put probably, I, I probably about two hours into research and, and developing questions into each guest. And I think that that's important. Um, because again, I'm not making money or anything off of this. So it, 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 uh, I'm not under the gun to put out, um, a bunch of content and, uh, and a bunch of content that, that maybe, you know, is not that interesting. So I, I really am selective about, um, who I, who I want to interview. And then I think I do a, a fairly good job of, of researching them before and putting questions together. All right, Pat, last, last, last pitch here. Uh, of course, Aaron, the Swayze is all over the chat, by the way. He's putting in so many comments that I can't even put up on the screen. <laughs> but he says he's very proud of the words Coach Kelly's doing back home in Kansas. Of course, uh, he's, he's got so much uh, to, to say there. You want to talk about a wrestling advocate, the Swayze. That's yeah. a guy. Why doesn't he have a podcast yet? Because I tell you, with his draw, I, I don't know. I mean, that's more of an Oklahoma draw than I, I can't quite get his Kansas now, Nebraska, um, you know frame down because he did the NAIs when I moved over to PA he had the uh, the commentary and he's been doing commentary for Concordia for a number of years so yeah. uh yeah well and I think he's got the standing record for the number of posts on our our talk forum so you know maybe he can get in podcasting and kind of get some record there as well so he's claiming he's, he's blaming central Oklahoma on it so I'm <laughs> absolutely with that so uh coach Kelly appreciate the time next up we've got we thought we were just going to have Jude Swisher, but now we've got Jude Swisher and Sam Herring from the Home Ad Advantage. They're coming up next after the break. Thank you for watching International Podcast Days Wrestling Edition. Coach Kelly, I'll be sure to check out the shows. It's been an honor. Thank you.